I've come into the relative warmth of the glass houses to meet horticultural researcher Dave Chandler. He's going to enlighten me about their technique for using biopesticides. So Dave, what is a biopesticide? Well, quite simply, biopesticides are biologically based agents used for pest control and we divide them into two broad classes. First of all, there's living organisms, that's things like predators, parasitic wasps and microorganisms. And secondly, there are agents which we broadly call biochemicals and they can be plant-derived compounds or they can be things like semiochemicals which are compounds, volatile compounds produced by insects to modify their behaviour. So are biopesticides inherently more environmentally friendly than conventional pesticides? Not necessarily. I mean, many biologically based pesticides do have very, very good environmental characteristics and often that's down to their specificity. So they have a low impact on non-targets, which would include humans and the environment. But of course, modern conventional pesticide chemistry also produces active ingredients with good environmental characteristics as well. I think the key points are for biopesticides, one, the type of organism used in the biopesticide, and secondly, of course, how it's used and whether it can be used in an environmentally sustainable way. Professor Wynne Grant has also been heavily involved in this subject and he sees a huge potential for biopesticides. The problem is at the moment of course we don't have enough products on the market because the registration process is so difficult but what we're seeing with chemical pesticides is of course uh, really three problems. Fewer actives are available because of regulatory changes and then there is demand from consumers to have um, fewer residues on products that they buy in the shops and then of course thirdly one sees increasing resistance problems to chemical pesticides as they are used over time. Warwick is also keen to explore the impact of biopesticides on a wider scale, especially within the agricultural and retail world. HRI recently hosted a conference to discuss the future of their research and welcomed a broad spectrum of contributors to the event. Dr Don Edgecombe has come across from the States to see how biopesticides might be adopted by his company AgriQuest. He gave us a manufacturer's perspective. The challenge is to discover microbes that have a broad application range because for commercialization <clears throat> and because it is a business and our investors expect a return that we have to have a product that can be um, as broad as possible and have the highest level of efficacy across a wide spectrum of pests and that is a very challenging thing to do. And what about the environmental impact? Undoubtedly they're a problem in the ecosystem. Um, I would acknowledge that they're better now than they were perhaps 10 years ago or certainly 20 years ago because we don't have the uh, particularly damaging persistent ones like the organochlorines that have been uh, outlawed now. Um, but um, what's remaining is, is not all as good as it should be and there are some, some pretty nasty chemicals still out there um, and, uh, and there's no doubt that there's been a lot of um, uh, environmental damage. Um, biodiversity is, is known to be affected by pesticide use. Particular species that have been identified with pesticides in their declining uh, populations and the route to solving that is actually using less pesticide. So when it comes to choosing our fruit and veg in the supermarket, do we really care whether they've been treated with chemicals or not? I don't really mind if it's got pesticides or not. I don't really think about it when I buy stuff. But I'd prefer it to be organic. How strong the content of pesticides are if they're not really that strong that I don't really bother. I don't really think about that much, but I suppose you can wash them off if they are. So I don't particularly look for organic um, produce, but occasionally it does taste nicer than the, um, the, the GM stuff. I do care if they've got chemicals on. I don't like the idea of eating fruit that's covered in chemicals, but probably on a student budget, I'm not too keen on paying extra for organic produce. People should be concerned about where produce comes from. I and mean, we do know from the data that residue levels are often higher on produce that has been imported. That doesn't matter, of course, with something like a banana or an orange, which is a product you peel. But if you think about products like grapes, then residue levels there are, can be a question for concern. Of course, what we also do have to remember is that you know, the vast majority of the produce that is sold in the shops is perfectly safe, perfectly within the permitted residue limits. So what is HRI doing to help? 
Well, I think the important aspect of our project is it represents a collaboration between HRI and, and our department on the main campus. I mean, clearly, HRI has a tremendous accumulated scientific expertise in this area and has been working in this area of biopesticides for some time, so there's a tremendous knowledge base to build on. But what we're bringing to that knowledge base in our project is the specialist knowledge that I have of regulation and how you can actually innovate in relation to a regulatory system and change it in a way so that it meets new goals and objectives.